Hey everyone, in this video we're just going to get our project set up and install the necessary dependencies for our project called Git Resume. Git Resume will allow you to enter a GitHub username and then display uh, projects and start projects and repos by that person to really build up a profile of who they are and, and what they do online within the Git community. Um, this will utilize uh, server-side rendering uh, using some of the isomorphic fetch libraries and really just understand how Next.js works on the client and the server side. Uh, Next.js is a great solution for this because we may want to have those pages indexed with SEO and um, you know we need those, those page transitions uh, really fast and smooth using the automatic code splitting feature. Um, but let's just dive in and get the project set up. We're going to create a directory. I'm just going to call this git resume. And we need to then move into that directory using the cd command, git resume. And once we're in here, I'm using yarn, but you can use npm if you wish. If you need to install yarn, more information can be found on their website about how to install it. Um, but I'm going to assume that you have it installed. And with that, just run yarn init hyphen y. The hyphen y just accepts the flags that yarn asks when initializing a new npm project, such as its name, version, and its main file and its author and license and things like that. We'll not get into it in too much detail in this episode. We will edit the package.json file that it creates, but we'll come to that a bit later on. Um, so with that created, I'm just going to open the Git resume inside of my text editor Atom. And if we have a look inside of the file here, it's just added some sensible defaults. Now, if we run yarn add next at beta react and react dom, what will happen here is it will bring down from yarn and the node registry, the npm registry, are next, react, and react dom. Now, next.js doesn't um, assume that you're using a particular version of react. It allows you to bring your own versions of that and the react dom, so that's really handy. Um, what you know, Sometimes when you're using a project or a boilerplate or something that you know is so built around a particular framework or library, you're kind of waiting for these boilerplates to implement the existing uh, code from React or Angular or whatever framework you're using. The beauty of Next.js is you can just bring your own version, um, which is really cool. So with this created, we've got our dependencies installed and it's added, added those to the package JSON file. What we'll next need to do is just create a scripts area inside of our package JSON and inside of this, Object, we will just simply run uh, ha have a script defined called dev and that will run the next command. If we save this file, we then will be able to in the terminal run yarn dev or npm run dev. Uh, one thing though with Next.js is by default it assumes you have a folder called pages and pages is where the root of your application lives. Uh, if there's an index page, it will assume that you have an index page here. So we're just gonna create a folder for now and we're gonna add a file called .keep because when we push this to git, uh, that will keep that structure in line for us. So with that done, we will then be able to run yarn dev and if everything is working correctly, we should see some text in green, which we do saying localhost uh, 3000. It's ready, it's waiting for those connections. If we switch over to our browser, and load localhost 3000, we will see a 404. This page cannot be found. Error message. Now this is normal. This is what you expect if, to see if from next, if you don't have a page to find. And we don't have a page to find in our pages folder. We've just got a .keep file. If we were to add a file, it would run. It would run. Um, don't worry about the terminal. It will throw up some errors, but that is totally fine at this stage because we don't have any pages created. I'm just going to stop the server using control C and this is kind of all we need to get running with our project. And at this stage, we are going to initialize a new Git repository running git init and we will do that using the git init command. Before we add any files to Git, we need to create a git ignore file because we do want to publish our node modules folder. There is also a folder called .next, which kind of handles a development build on your machine. If we run those files inside of there, uh, we won't commit those. If we just have a look though, by running ls, 
So that will list the folders and files. We've then got something called node modules. If I just run L, we'll see there's a folder called .next. So with that done, we'll just add those files, git add, and if we just type uh, git status, we should see we've got four files which have been added to the git. And then finally, we need to commit our files and we'll use uh, message. I'm just using initial setup. You can call this what you like. And we've got those there. Now we're at a stage now where we can push this to GitHub. And that's maybe something that you wish to do. You may want to go away and create a, a directory on GitHub for now. Um, we can do that and then we can push that later. I'll show you how to push it to GitHub at the very end of the series. Um, we'll, we'll not kind of get tied into that right now. Um, but this is all we need to do to get started. We are tracking our code. We have Next installed, a script set up to run our development build, and we are ready to create some pages. In the next video, we'll do just that. So have a great day. Happy coding. And stay tuned for the next episode next week, and we'll start to dive in and get some React code built. Have a great day.